a way to track and report on church planting outcomes from people of yes. In both the Old and New Testaments of the Holy Bible, those who did God's work used to report to others. Today, wherever the good news is spreading rapidly, we who serve Christ do the same. When Moses became too busy, he followed the advice of his father-in-law, Jethro. Thus, he organized the nation by levels of supervision. First was Moses, then a council of seventy elders, and after them chiefs of a thousand households, chiefs of a hundred, chiefs of fifty, and chiefs of ten households. This structure allowed important matters to be reported up one line of chiefs, and timely answers to come back down all the lines of chiefs, informing the entire nation. Only the hardest questions came to Moses. Moses legislated this structure in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1. Jesus showed how to coach new leaders when he sent out the twelve and the seventy-two others. Jesus chose workers, appointed them and empowered them to do all that he did. These workers were to pray to raise up more workers. Jesus planned with them their methods, where to go, what to do, and what to say. When they returned, Jesus would listen to their reports of all they had done and said. Following Jesus' model, you and your co-workers can coach others also, by following these seven steps. 1. Pray together for wisdom to make good plans and decisions. 2. Listen to shepherds' reports, stories, and opportunities, and map results. 3. Agree on a plan for each worker's next steps in his churches and cells. 4. Assign Bible readings and practical studies to help follow their plan. 5. Review previous assignments, listening to each worker tell what he learned. 6. Provide instruction, show new skills, and practice these together. 7. Intercede together for their work, for new churches and for new shepherds. The book of the Acts of the Apostles records how the Apostles and their co-workers tracked the outcomes of their work. They kept track of numbers of baptisms, numbers of disciples and numbers of churches. They noted whether these were being added were increasing or were multiplying. They recorded which social classes, cities and regions were receiving the good news and approximate dates. Paul instructed his co-workers to train up generations of new workers, while they were starting new churches whose members were starting new generations of new churches. In this way, their work kept on multiplying for many years. What you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses in trust to faithful men, who will be able to teach others also. 2 Timothy 2 2 Faithful folk are those who follow the plans that they have laid. In this way, those who coach new shepherds also observe their work and hear their stories. Later, they also report to ministry leaders the progress that each shepherd has made, so that leaders can make better decisions. Coaches teach new workers how to draw maps that show their churches and cell groups. They also draw symbols on their map, showing which of Jesus' basic commandments each group has begun to obey. Shepherds start by drawing a circle, or some other shape, 
that represents a church, cell or discipleship group. Lines between circles show which group's members have helped start other such gatherings. They may call these, mother churches and, daughter churches. Shepherds may indicate where each gathering is held, a date when it started, its ethnicity and its language. They also record numbers of adult attenders, numbers of baptized persons, numbers of children and youth, and numbers of deaths. They may also draw symbols near each circle showing which of Jesus' commandments each gathering has begun to obey. These commandments include worship, evangelism, baptism, prayer, Bible learning, the Lord's Supper, social projects and giving. When a leader or a coach has appointed a shepherd to serve one or more gatherings, the shepherd draws a human form beside a circle with his name or code number. He also draws lines between a shepherd and newer shepherds whom he has begun to coach. As churches and gatherings start new ones, a shepherd will update his map, which may grow bigger and fill several sheets of paper. They show these maps to their coach, and they lay plans together. Coaches and shepherds plan together how the shepherd will help gatherings to reproduce. Coaches view shepherds maps, and they talk together about recent changes. Coaches write down information from the maps. Coaches ask questions and pay attention to what each shepherd reports. Coaches do this while helping each shepherd plan his work. Afterwards, coaches compile other maps from information that they learned from shepherds. On these maps, they show lineages and generations of churches. They also show lineages and generations of coaches and shepherds, as well as show names or codes and numbers. After every coaching session, Coaches fill in paper forms with the same information that they have on their maps. About once a month, they submit these forms to their supervisor. Their supervisor is also their coach. From these forms and maps, they plan their coaching work. Supervisors submit the paper forms to an information worker who enters all the information into a computer. The computer adds up all the numbers that show everyone's progress. These reports go to everyone who must make decisions about ministry plans. At least once a year, ministry leaders gather all this information and they write a report on all that God has accomplished through the coaches and shepherds. Leaders share this annual report with everyone in the ministry and churches. They also share this report with ministry partners including those who donate money, equipment and training. These reports help in many ways to give thanks and praise to God for all that he has accomplished, to make decisions about how to improve everyone's ministry, to recommend methods and materials that have proven fruitful, to discover ethnic groups that need more prayer and workers, to encourage others to give more and to work in the same ways. Let us make sure we all report about our work to others, because Jesus' apostles and their co-workers did so. Ministry leaders and supervisors will show reports to all workers who want to see them. In places where authorities are hostile towards Christians, 
maps and reports do not tell anybody's real name. None of these maps or reports allows anyone to get money for himself by telling about someone else's work. Maps and reports are never used by leaders to punish a worker or to embarrass him, only to help him succeed better. <laughs>